right? One thing we have to address in that sense is this is one of the areas where I wish actually we'd had like, I know that obviously you had that one before the major of the documentary crew, but I wish we'd had like, you know, proper like produced like amazing quality level, like sports documentaries basically. Yeah. Because obviously there's so much kind of like footage we'll never have now and stories that's hard to tell. We can only kind of tell the, the stories ourselves in words. Yeah. But one of the ones I always thought I wish I could tell is two of the players, obviously the two of my favorites, you and Device. I already liked you as players anyway. Like you get, your game style's very different. By the way, you both had similar stories. People were always questioning Questioning you until you won and saying they're playing like you know the the baiting whatever you know you know it's the similarities there you had to overcome yeah. these things and winning finals but one of the things like that makes me beyond the game just as humans respect you both incredibly is the way that you both not only like battled through pretty pretty harsh illness but you were winning your championships while the illness was there it's one thing if you were still just a good player if people don't know this period when nip was winning all the tournaments in the beginning of the game was when you had these issues with your stomach device obviously that literally happened he got that issue i think before they even went on the run with astralis winning all that so to me to be able to do that like that's like that's mental like it's not like you physically found some magic cure right i mean from what i remember back in the day you had a similar thing to him right the stress of playing in a final can trigger that you could what meal you had before like we all know back in the day if you go to a tournament you might have to just eat a burger from the bar there's no there's no way you can go to get your dinner right so how, how did you battle through it? explain what it was like like what would it be like on an average tournament if you're having these issues like what would happen how would you battle through it well for for me especially since um every day is a new day for me even today it is but now it's much better because uh i mean i didn't help myself because i was a long time smoker as well uh, nowadays I can be at least open with it because I've, I've changed and stopped completely. I'm so happy with that. It's the best choice I've done in my health and my life, if you ask me. Uh, before I was a little bit, you know, I didn't want to be honest with it. I felt the shame of it a little bit. So, right. Uh, so that's why I never wanted to say it out openly about it. But I, I can do it nowadays. And also I'm a little bit older. <laughs> um, but every day was a new day. I could wake up with stomach pain directly. And it just felt horrible. Like I could basically like, I'm like falling down on my seat and just like, I'm not just basically just sitting and playing. It felt like, um, it, it was tough. It was pain in the ass. If you ask me, um, cause I never knew how my body is going to react to one specific day. And I think it's similar to the device, um, or Nico, um, I don't know exactly his story. I know he's been very honest with it and open with it to some extent. It's me as well. But for me, it was just like, I remember in the early, like the, especially during the dominance days, I think we played in Germany. Uh, it was one of those worst, by not by a tournament, but one of the worst one. It was like very much delay and all that kind of stuff. We played right. we just throwing a final at like five in the morning or something like that. And I remember my stomach disease were so bad, like really motherfucking bad that I couldn't eat or drink before I need to hit the toilet. And I think I went to the toilet during that final day, like eight, no, that's eight, even more, like 30 times plus, because I couldn't eat or drink like at all. And I needed the energy and the, the water or the drinks or whatever to be having a high level of energy for playing a, a best of three game, but I couldn't. So I just sit there and eat a little bit and then like, oh, I need to go to the toilet. And I maybe took a bite. That's it, you know, and then I need to go to the toilet. And then I'm like, after like a half an hour, I'm like, maybe I should need to get more because I haven't eaten anything. Go back, eat again, go to the toilet again or drink water. And like, oh, I need to go to the toilet because I can't have it in my stomach, you know, like, or go through. So through, through the years, it was painful. Like that's, that could happen it also couldn't happen so some days i just woke up pretty normally and okay. didn't have any stomach pain and I'm like oh everything's fine and blah 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 the group stage went fine all of a sudden then qualifiers comes i'm like oh okay i'm fucked again can't do anything about it um but i think that was just like my mentality my strength you know because i was because i don't want to be the burden of the team of losing a game i just want to go forward and be the best player i could be and even better than i were the day before or the same day you know um, I think like during my career, I think I had three huge crashes completely where I couldn't really play because I, I was also used to the pain because I went 23 years of my life. I have stomach pains. So I know the burden of having it. Uh, but when I started taking the medicines and all that kind of stuff, so it was weird for me to not have stomach pain. 
So I noticed it even more when I had stomach pain, for example. Um, but like ESWC 2014, when Variegation were the uprising with Shoxy or Shox, and we played against them in the semis. I had to go lay on the ground in some sort of a booth somewhere uh, because I couldn't basically sit up or stand up because I was like so dizzy and my body was just reacting everything I ate and drink. Um, one of the Star Ladder finals, uh, we played against the Standard Dragons. The Ukrainian guys, they knew about my stomach issues, so they were very okay with me taking breaks like during the game. But we, we play against the Standard Dragons in a game that was like such a long game. I think we played overtimes and all that kind of stuff. We eventually lost the game. And I know for sure I, I, I couldn't sit at all. Like I, I was just basically a person there, not doing anything. I was just there as a human being. Hope, hope the game is over, basically. Uh, at least that's how I felt. Uh, Did you ever seriously think, like, maybe I have to quit? A couple of times. I mean, the, the third one, the biggest one was in 2016 when I was put in a hospital for almost three weeks and the doctors told me I'm not allowed to travel and I'm not allow allowed to play because they need me to be on meds and drops and my stomach isn't reacting well to the medicine. Um, and my human body is not working as it should be. Uh, that was a very tough period in my life. And also I had personal issues outside of the game. I didn't have a home, especially during that time period. Um, and we were still competing and playing and all that kind of stuff. So it was very tough. And then put in the hospital at the same time was a very tough moment in my life. Um, it's very, very tough, very painful one as well in a lot of ways. Um, but I remember the doctors came in to me and I said, I have three tournaments coming up in two weeks, one in Brazil, one in Atlanta and one in Moscow. Can I go? And she just looks at me. I'm like a, the most stupid person ever. And she's like, why are you even thinking that? And I'm like, well, I feel much better. I was like lying, of course, because I wanted to compete and play. <laughs> um, and she was like, you can't, you can't co up with this lifestyle that you're doing. You can't do this to yourself anymore because it's going to end very badly, like really badly. Do you really want to sacrifice that? And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, yeah. Without even like hesitating at all. Like, yep, yeah, I'm done. And she was like, even brought in like seven more doctors and all that kind of stuff, trying to convince me of like not going and doing these things. And they, they were saying like, we're trying a new meds on you. So we don't know if we can let you go either. Uh, like, because we need to have you here so we can take tests directly if it's necessary, if it doesn't react well, et cetera, et cetera. But eventually the, the medicine started working on me during the second week or the third week or whatever it was, because it felt like it felt like forever when I was lying in that room. And um, it worked good in that way because the medicine worked out good and I started to feel better, but not in a good, stable way. Uh, and they told me specifically, but you can't smoke anymore. Like you can't fucking smoke anymore because it's going to end up even worse now if you do it with this medicine. And I'm like, OK, sure whatever is necessary for me to just leave this room and go travel again. And they just start looking at me again. I'm like, this is the stupidest person I'm talking to. <laughs> that, that, that's where their face is. They didn't say that, but like, you know, sure. I, can, I, I know what they were thinking and saying, like in their, their eyes and mind, you know? Um, but yeah, I was, I was starting in one of those days, at least starting to believe like, maybe I should just quit because my health is not keeping up. Uh, but as a competitor and as a person hates to be not left behind, but more like a, a, like a reason for not competing or it felt like the burden of myself because I take way too much responsibility on myself. I don't want to be the person, you know, I don't want to be the reason for disappointing other people. That's, that's where my mindset. So, yeah.